What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with a very good friend of mine. I think this is his third time on the Jay Campbell podcast, Gunther Sonnenfeld, who is literally a new earth architect. Gunther, man, how are you, brother? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. It's awesome to have you. So uh, you guys, most of you guys who follow me know Gunther, you know, he's been in the Optimized Tribe as one of the thought leaders and uh, subject matter experts talking about blockchain and cryptocurrency. Uh, He's obviously come on to talk about all sorts of things and building the new earth from financial system architecture. I mean, all sorts of stuff. But if you're not familiar with him, I'll just give you a little bit on his bio. He is an interdisciplinarian and an inventor, having cultivated a unique set of skills which compromise emerging technology, bioecological science, and applied economics. He's worked across industries such as tech, finance, real estate, energy, agriculture, healthcare, education, and media. And with a small group of trusted partners, he's building a version of the new economic system. Don't have to go into it anymore. He's literally like one of the smartest people that I know. And as again, I call him along with myself and others like him, where we are the new earth architects. So today's podcast is going to be sensational. Uh, we're going to be talking solutions as I always do with this guy. We don't, you know, pontificate about BS and complaining. It's about what can we do before we jump into the points real quick. I want you to talk about the two articles that you just wrote, which obviously uh, I shared uh, both of them. Um, but one of them, which we're going to talk a lot about today is the one you talked about vibration and coherence. And I thought, and I actually, I don't think I'd say, I know that you you have a gift with words. We're going to talk about your book, which is coming, but uh, you put vibration into a understandable, relatable article. Because as you know, you know, I talk about this, Michael Jaco and I talk about this together all the time. Guys like you and I and our friends and our peers talk about this, but very few people outside of that understand what it means. So talk about your article and how you were able to really make the word and the terminology of vibration so understandable. Yeah, so what I've been focused on doing in my writing, which basically is a reflection of the work I do, is to surface the scientific principles um, behind how things work. So with vibration and frequency and all these things that we talk about as they relate to consciousness, I thought it would be a good idea to... um, to apply those in scientific context and visualize them so that people can see the effects and the impacts of, you know, putting themselves in a higher consciousness. That's right. essentially the core of the, that's the intention. So um, the nice part about that is there is a lot of 
quantum science, natural earth science, bioecological science that uh, with, with plenty of research and experiments and studies that have been conducted, particularly in the last 40 years that support all of this. So in other words, you know, if you're, if you're doing the inner work um, and you're taking on <clears throat> things that are longstanding issues or aspects of your personality that uh, might be, you know, darker or unsavory, um, it's, it, it's sort of a reference point for people to look at um, it, it, almost like a goal to, to see visually that their work has a tangible outcome that's more right. positive. That's right. basically it, yeah. I mean, beautiful, bro. Um, I mean, again, you know, it's important. I mean, as I say, and again, I'm gonna to get to your points because I want us to keep this like very strategic and acerbic, but uh, there is nothing but that now, bro. There's nothing left. There's not about you and me making money, you know, getting to 10X and 100X and having things and all these stuff and, you know, hot wives and girlfriends and stacking chips and all that stuff, that shit's gone. This is the only thing that matters now, like getting the collective consciousness slash vibration slash awareness of humanity to a level where this nonsense will end, right? I mean, this podcast is going to go live fast and I'll just give everybody the date. It's February 18th, Thursday. And we are obviously in this morass of whatever timelines converging multiple timelines, people moving from third, fourth, and fifth dimension. You know, again, everybody is now creating their own reality, again, based on their awareness, but based on their state of being, based on how much they serve creation. So it's like, I keep saying this now to people, again, my friends in my circle, when they want to get into politics or finances or any of that shit, I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to listen to any of that anymore. That's all third dimensional. That's done. That is crumbling, probably already gone. You know, so this podcast and obviously your book, which is coming, which I want you to talk about here in a second is what matters. So the first point is perfectly what I just said, which was leaving the flat world experience. Yeah. So to talk about that in relation to what I just said, I mean, it's basically the same thing. Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned politics and obviously that is the sort of the focal point in, in the media. Um, and we, we all know it's theater, um, but it, it's, it's not even three-dimensional, it's actually two-dimensional. It's sort of this flat container of nonsense that has really no relevance or meaning in the, in, the, in the real physical or natural world. And apart from the fact that it, it's becoming clear to more and more people that politicians only act in their own best interests, it's also the, the specter of that theater and the, and the container with which all of these things are happening that is an, is an illusion. Um, and it's just noise basically, right? So, so I say that because reacting to that noise is, is essentially a waste of energy and time. And you're basically placing your energy and foci into this flat container and you don't need to do that, right? The same can be said of social media. It's flat media. You know, you're basically looking at a screen. You're, in many cases, not even interacting with a human being. And, right. and then conversations themselves are flat in the sense that you, there's no real conversation structure happening that reflects perspectives gleaned from real world, from lived experience. And right that's a whole nother problem to address and, and an opportunity, but that's essentially what we're experiencing right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, I mean, in, in other words, it's holographic. And, you know, we think, you think of the young people who want or don't know any better, right? Like, you know, you and I are in our forties, you know, we grew up in a world where you had to research information. There was critical thinking skills that had to be fostered and cultivated because there was no Google or Alexa or Siri. Whereas right. these young kids now have grown up in a world, and again, I'm not pointing at them, but I'm just making a point of fact that, you know, they've grown up in a world, bro, where they literally could get by without yeah. critical thinking skills because there was analysis, AI, Google, technology, whatever, to do the thinking for them. So it's difficult, you know, to, 
teach the principles that you and I espouse, especially that you're espousing in your book to younger people who have had it so easy, who've never really had to discern through, again, this process of critical thinking. And again, I always make the joke about how you and I, bro, we had to go to the library, pull out card catalogs, use the Dewey Decimal System. And then after all that nonsense, you would have to go to the library, <laughs> go down the roads and search for the books. I mean, think about that in relevance to now when all a child has to do is a keystroke or a voice on an auditory recording, say, search for blank. And I mean, again, it's, 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 a, it's a divergent gulf. It's so far removed from a younger person's reality what you and I went through. But thank God we did go through that because we can appreciate it too. We have the eyes to see of the differentiation. And again, a lot of these younger people don't. So what would you say, you know, I know the next point is the bifurcation of being, and it kind of is relevant to this, but like, what would you say to the younger people? Like, how do they develop these, these needed and necessary critical thinking skills? Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. Um, in my interactions with younger people, I've noticed that it, it they break out into two cohorts. One is a group that, and, and I'm generalizing a bit, sure. but one's a group that um, is basically completely sheltered from right. the physical world. And that's been by design and by intention from their families or their circumstances. And then there's another group uh, who I've also interacted with that are very switched on and very awake. And they had to do that because of their lived experience. Their right. circumstances dictated that they were, you know, pushed out into the world and had to fend for themselves. So it's a, it's a very polarized cross-section of people, but also very emblematic of the, of the polarity that we're seeing everywhere in the world. Um, so I, I say that too in a, in a more positive note, because I do think and I do see that um, there are plenty of young people that are perhaps more awake than we were. Oh, absolutely. Um, you absolutely. know. And, and they're just looking at the world and saying, this what doesn't make sense. This, this they're isn't, saying, what, the hell? what is yeah. this? You know, right. Right. there was an interesting um, New York Times article that actually my mom and my younger brother sent me this morning. And I sort of laughed because it, it, it talks about critical thinking. But of course, what they did was they, they framed it in such a way where, you know, uh, they, it, the title of the article says basic, something to the effect of don't go down the rabbit hole, right? And then they mention the whole fake news phenomenon and everything sure. else. What they're basically saying in that article is don't think too much because that's not critical thinking. This is critical thinking. And by our definition and standards, right. this is what fake, me uh, fake news and fake media are. And I thought, well, that's a clever device to continue to funnel people into a very compartmentalized way of, of thinking about themselves in the world. I didn't respond to the thread for a lot of reasons, but, um, you know, they're just, they're, there are attacks on all sides at this point. So <clears throat> to round out the answer to your question, at least what I do, I don't even look at the news. No. And then I, I have a, a system where I become interested. I look at patterns in the world and there'll be certain themes or topics that surface or emerge and I connect them. And then I have a way of funneling information partly through technology to kind of study and analyze the connection points between those, those pieces of information. And I've been doing that for a long time. Um, mostly because I mean, the journalistic process is there's no investigative journalism. It's gone, bro. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. So you have to be your own investigative journalist. And, and look, there is something to be said for not going down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theory land. And um, I mean, we know that conspiracies don't come from nowhere, but at right. the same time, this idea that um, we're gonna try to predict things that we can't see is also kind of a fleeting exercise. So yeah. it's sort of like, well, you know, who cares what happened 30 years ago behind closed doors, you know, in a Masonic temple or whatever it is. Right. Um, we right. need to look at the patterns that are, that are real signals that are right in front of us and look at them and connect them and, and ask ourselves, okay, 
what, what, is, what are the optics of this? What's really going on here? And then ask better questions and then carry that into, you know, conversations with, with friends that, you know, we can have those conversations with, right. which by the way, it may not be many, but th they can still be had. So beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just a one point, you know, to echo what you just said. Um, and it gets into, again, to the bifurcation of the being, but mm -hmm. what's happening in Texas right now, as you know, I know, as we talked about yesterday on the phone is unprecedented young people who are not, you know, again, the bifurcated side, the, whatever you want to call them, the, the unawakened, let's just call them unawakened without judgment. Let's just say they're really, they're, they're the type, they're, you know, late twenties, early thirties, single, and they live their life moment to moment, which, you know, some people could argue is great because they're only in the now space, but they also have no plans. They don't have food. They don't have like any preparation they're, Again, they're not thinking, you know, with the Boy Scout motto of, you know, know thyself and be prepared. And, you know, there's articles now coming out all across the wire you know, from all sorts of people talking about, bro, people don't even have basic necessities right now in Texas, right? They've been without power for four or five days. They don't have food. They don't have water. They don't have heat. They don't have backup generators. They don't have this, that, and the other. It's like, if you're 29 or 32 or whatever, you're one of those people. Well, it's not like you don't have access, you know, as Robert Stanley was saying to me this morning, it's not like you don't have access to information that would tell you to like be prepared again. So it gets into the whole point, which we'll go into right now, again, of the bifurcation of being. And, you know, it's now literally in society, those who are somewhat awakened to the idea that things are not what they seem. And then the people who just, again, are living hand to mouth based on their current reality, which is obviously not real. So, you know, it's interesting because it really is right now, as you and I were, again, we're talking about on the phone yesterday, like merging timelines, like depending on your state of being, you know, and if you're here versus being down here, you're in the victim or you're in sovereignty, you can create a wonderful reality right now in a crazy time and age. But if you're down here, you're probably not feeling good. And again, it's energy and vibration. And, you know, we're talking about the essential process, but like, you know, go deeper on that, you know, talk about the mirror effect. Yeah. So one thing to add to your previous point, on, on the on information, I think one way to frame this in a, in, a, in a very straightforward and fundamental way is to, is to say, okay, you can scrutinize or debate over information that's fed to you, or you can commit yourself to, di to discovering and exploring how things actually work, right? So things can be written about the financial system or technologies or cryptocurrencies or the environment. But if you don't understand how things work, you're just debating something that, that there's no basis in perspective, right? And it's, that's a really important thing, which ladder, which legs into this idea of the bifurcation of the being, which is to say that um, we're now at a, at a point in, in recorded history where we sort of stand alone in the world and we look around and the tendency is to say, well, all this stuff is happening to me as opposed to how did I get here? How did I create this for myself, whether I wanted to or not? And what, what am I willing to do about it? Right. Right. So the bifurcation of, of the individual, of the, of the individual human being is, is essentially this pheno emerging phenomenon where you are yourself isolated and yet you're still looking at external things for guidance when all the, when the, when the core challenge right now is to say, okay, what am I willing to do to change my circumstances to create a different reality? And it's not an easy question to answer. Um, but there are lots of tools and methods with which to do that. And that's, that's essentially what I've been writing about from, from experience and what I hope to help people understand more, um, more intimately. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I mean, dude, it's, uh, I mean, again, you know, I, I, we go a million different directions. I mean, it, it, we're in very interesting and strange times. I mean, again, depending on a person's state of being, you know, where they sit right now on the vibrational scale, 
you can be an absolute abject misery and misery, as we know, loves company, yeah. or you can be in bliss. I mean, you know, I flat out say that every single day I choose to be in the highest state that I can be right again. And it's like, you know, what's the credo it's, you know, are you right now living in a fifth dimensional, you know, state of being and, and a fifth dimensional state of being is serving creation at your highest and best. Doesn't matter whether you're a ditch digger, hedge fund manager, you know, doesn't matter. You know, it, it doesn't matter your, you know, material, you know, uh, 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 aggregation versus, you know, having nothing. It literally just matters. Like, are you happy and in a state of bliss and enjoying your life? Because, you know, materialism and attachments to those things offers nothing in, in a relevancy standpoint from like whether you're happy or how we're expressing and receiving and, you know, having joy. I mean, it's, it's crazy to like really think about things now, but it's like, as long as a person, and this is my opinion, but as long as a person wakes up in the morning and does not, as you said at the very beginning of this podcast, attached to the news, to the social media filter, you know, to the, the mainstream narrative, the construct that they want you attached to, which again is totally fear-based, yeah. you know, totally red chakra, survival programming, you know, maintain a sense of fear, as you and I were talking about yesterday, triple masks. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredible how simple it really is to keep yourself in a fifth dimensional construct, which has no duality and no karma, but dude, the mainstream wants you in third dimension. They want you in fear. They want you thinking that you're going to die of COVID. They want you to get the vaccine, right? They want you to get tested. Everything is fear constructed. So it's like, if you avoid all of that and you live your life with none of that, which as you and I were saying yesterday, like you pretty much, you know, again, regardless of what you do, you can avoid it, right? Maybe you got to go to the grocery store like you and I did. Maybe you got to go to the gas station. I mean, there's little places where you're going to be exposed to that third dimensional construct. But if you are very choosy about your time and obviously you guard your energy, which I, we're going to get to, um, dude, you don't have to experience any of that fear-based duality or polarity of the third dimension. I mean, you can completely live in the fifth dimension right now. I mean, you know, talk a little bit about that because again, in your article about vibration and the ascensional process and the connection to it, uh, I thought you did an amazing job of like, again, making it extremely relevant for people, you know, because again, people think of ascension and they think of all the new age attachments to it and the ships are coming and Sananda and all of that. And it's like, no. Yeah. Ascension is just raising your consciousness yeah. to a state of awareness where you do not attach to fear. It's literally that simple. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> the thing to consider with conscious awareness is that if you look at amplitude, which would be on a, on a Y axis and frequency, which would be on an X axis, as you raise your vibration towards a higher amplitude and you become more aware or hyper aware, you are, you are also at the same time going to experience all the other stuff. Okay. Yeah. So it's not that negative feelings or attachments or any of the things that we struggle with as a shadow part of ourselves goes away. It just means that you're more present to it. And it's, and it's a good thing, ultimately, because it's a guidepost. You need contrast and polarity to constantly remind yourself of how to make improvements to your, your circumstances, right? Yeah, right? So one of the, to your point earlier, one of the, I think, the great deceptions of, of New Ageism and, and anything that, that, that has been um, sort of overly, um, it, that's overly dogmatic is the idea that you can reach infinite bliss and then that's it. But right. it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. I mean, we're not, we're not in that, we're not in that realm of existence, at least not yet. So <clears throat> you, you, sh you need to be conscious of the fact that you you're using both sides, right? You you're, you're going to attain moments of joy or bliss. And at the same, right alongside of it, you're going to see a part of yourself that probably hadn't surfaced before. Yeah. And, and you want to take it on and then you want to put it in its place. Right. So I'll give you an example. 
Um, this is a really simple one, but it's really powerful. If you say I am angry, okay, there's a distinction between saying I am angry and I am anger, okay? Right. Right. And words are alchemy. They're very powerful. Totally. Right? So you could also say, I feel anger, which exactly. is totally fine, or I feel sadness or frustration. Right. And what you want to try to do is put it in its place by declaring it in its place. Right. You want to separate your true self from the emotional attachment. Right. That's yeah. the way I can explain it. And, um, you know, it, it, it's something that you... You, you have to remind yourself to do constantly it's because it's, it's always there. So we're not going to wipe away emotion. Emotions are beautiful things. We, we, that's what makes us human. And there is certainly an element of, of programming at the genetic level, which we're dealing with. Um, you know, some mystics and scientists and, you know, teachers have called this the integral self, right? Where essentially there is a, literally a, 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 an architecture, if you will, that has been programmed into our DNA right. prior to birth, where when we enter the world, we enter the world pure. But as soon as we, we enter the realm, this realm, this three-dimensional realm, we are immediately confronted with all these external things, signals, um, you know, uh, programs, what have you. And, you know, and, and it's by design and it's by our choice. As you said in the beginning, it's, it's a, a choice that we make as souls. There are agreements that we make when we come into the, to the world in this timeline. So you, you have to be aware of it. So it's, it's one part deprogramming, right? What we've been told externally and one part reprogramming what we intuit and what we see when we come into higher conscious awareness. Beautiful. I mean, I want to go back to what you said though because you're right. Dude, words are alchemy. They are, yeah. Words are the most powerful thing that we have as humans. You know, people don't even understand what the Tower of Babel moment really meant. It literally meant that they scrambled, they scrambled the intonations of our voice box, which was able from a harmonic frequency to achieve resonance yeah. just through you know, singing and chanting and hymning and all that stuff. That's why when people understand at a level, I get a spiritually advanced level of like the, uh, the I am or the OM or the ah intonations and the tonality that comes from that, it changes the, the heart. It, it, you know, it, as I call it, the coherence capacitor is opened and the heart channel, which is the key to everything is opened. And so a person obviously chanting monks, people that meditate regularly, doing ah uh, and uh, you know um like i can do that right now and say um harmonic resonance yeah and i feel my left brain and my right brain separate and my heart channel open because again i've practiced it so many times but dude saying what you said when someone says i feel this way versus i am never ever insert the monad I am presence into a power statement because that is now creating an energy field around your body, making right. you that way. Right. So if I, I'm angry, yeah. dude, you just literally lowered your field into the lowest reddest level. And as you know, quantum physics, the law of resonance, the law of attraction, however you want to understand it, the hermetic principles brings exactly more of that into your life. I am angry. So now you're attracting other angry people. Right. It's so yeah. simple, but yet so complex because the world does not understand that the words that they use is literally the reality they create. So every day you're so true. Like, you know, when you hear people say, I try or I yeah. wish, right. or I, yeah. if I could, I should, or any of that, you know, and they, they constantly, as you know, say that. And it just becomes this reinforcement field of never accomplishing anything because they're always acting like they want to instead of actually being it and again you're you're also referring to the four primary universal laws the, the main ones being um uh, attraction intention well it's attraction intention allowance and balance right and there's a fifth sort of macro law called the law of deliberate intent so 
going back to what you were saying, if you make declarative statement, when you find yourself in a situation like that, which happens all the time, it happens to me all the time, you can say to yourself or declare aloud in a, in a very specific resonance, I am a human being becoming a better version of myself. And in this moment, I am feeling angry, but I am not the anger itself, mm -hmm. right. Right? right? And it's very helpful, um, very, very helpful. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. The other thing that you mentioned, which is really interesting, is in regards to meditation. So there's all sorts of ways that you can meditate and, 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 and prayer and, and do ceremony. One of the things I've noticed in my experience working with the indigenous communities, um, like you know First Nations and, and other groups, is there's a reason why there is movement in ceremony, mm -hmm. because you are moving in rhythm with the frequencies of energies that might be wanted or unwanted. Yep. You are achieving a zero state or a harmonic balance with that energy. And the movement is a, is, is your energy matched up with the energies that are present to achieve a different state of consciousness, right? Same thing with hymns, same thing with chanting and singing and, and all of those things. So it's funny because I don't do sitting meditation anymore. I do standing like an I Ching standing meditation. Sure, sure. And a lot of that is tied to maybe martial arts or working out or whatever it is. But the basic, the, the basic premise is that I am basically placing my energy within my own field, my own Taurus field or morphic field, uh, either against or in alignment with the other energies around me so I can achieve balance. And that's, right why it's important to, to play music or to sing or to do art or to exercise, right? Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, I don't, I'm the same way. My, my meditation is now just contemplation and introspection. And it's mm. most of the time in my shower, mm. uh, in the morning, in playing the, thir the, thir the 333 hertz, which you have for me, yes. angelic frequency that our good friend you know, downloaded, and I will literally just be in my shower, right? I got hot water hitting my scalp, which is increasing brain-derived neurotrophic factor formation and creation anyway. So I'm now more connected to quote unquote God spark. And I'm listening to the energy of source. So it's like, or, or the sounds or the frequency of source. So it's like, now I just stand there again and I just think, and I obviously every now and then I will pray or just open myself up. And I'm, I'm more about just like an open vessel. Mm. You know, and when I want to get really deep, sometimes I'll do that. Um, you know, but I can't really do that that often because I'm I, not I do it loud. It <laughs> I mean, I do it loud, and my kids are asleep, and so you know, it doesn't. It, it just you know, they'll wake up because I'm early in the morning and stuff doing it. But I mean, man, if people, you know, I want to get to your last point here in a second. But I mean, if people just made a conscious effort to have an inner work or a ritual, you know, a ritualistic inner work or mindfulness practice where again, they didn't just do it once a week on third because they read about it in a Russell Simmons meditation right. book. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you actually practice it and you yeah. do it every single day. I mean, I remember my wife told me when we first got together, she's like, wow, you have an amazing physique. She's like, you need to start doing that with your inner work. And I just looked right. at her like she was nuts. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. So, so many people are physically gifted and they train their bodies with all this stuff and they eat right and they do all this stuff, but they do nothing for the internal. Yeah. And as you know, the external is meaningless if you're not working the internal. Yeah. So to your, to, to two of your points, the, one of the things that's very rarely ever discussed from a scientific point of view is that 
what we're really talking about is neurophysiology. Okay. And neurophysiology deals with functions of the nervous system, but more specifically, we're talking about sensations in the body. Right. So when we are in or approaching harmonic resonance, we literally feel in, in, in the form of sensation, a, a shift right. in, in our bodies, literally. And that also ties into intuition. So when you say you intuit that something's wrong or something's good, or you're not sure, that's a sensation in the body. And this is distinct from emotion. Right. The, the, the predominant logic in psychoanalysis, you know, contemporary psychology deals with feelings and thoughts, but it doesn't address neurophysiology. And that's the most important thing because ultimately the mind is, is in itself its own place per J.S. Milton, right? It's a very, very salient prophetic quote. And what, he, what, he, what he's really saying is that you, you don't want to be confined or let the mind determine what is going on within you and around you. You want to listen to your body, right? And, and I, I think it's something, that, again, that, that's really not addressed very much at all, at least in, in clinical uh, scientific and psychological discussions, although a lot of people do address it in in holistic uh, wellness and, and medicine and those er, uh, those domains. Yeah, no, I mean, well said. Um, I mean, again, a, a, a mindfulness program, again, ritualistically practiced with ruthless focus and intent is going to change the game for everyone because like you said, you're gonna be able to intuit what is a feeling and what is a creation. And again, feelings are third dimensional reactions, right? It's just like you have this because something happened to you in your life. And again, and I always say this, and we'll get to your last point here in a second, but I always say this, like you could be even what you and I call spiritually fit, very mindful, have a phenomenal meditation, introspection, contemplation in the morning, and then go out in your car, dude, and some maniac cuts you off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what are you going to do about that? Well, the master you know, recognizes that that action was not something that they could consciously control. So they, instead of reacting to that person who just acted like a complete idiot, you just say, does this serve me to be into road rage or to chase yeah. them down and pull them out of their car? Right. Like, yeah. It doesn't serve me. I let it go. And again, as the brilliant Dr. Hawkins says, and this is, I live this now in my life and it's crazy how much better my life is doing this. He says, if you want to be a master, never, ever cut anyone off in traffic. Mm. And that is so true. Let them cut you off. Let anybody do anything stupid in traffic and just sit back and just like say, wave at them, right? They're, they're looking at you like, and you're just like, now, obviously, dude, that really does require a master because guys like you and I with testosterone and are masculine, hyper-masculine, maybe we want to get out of the car and we want to like say, hey, you know, but you don't do that. You yeah. literally pull back and you I control mean, that reality. Honest, to be totally honest with you, and, and, and again, this goes back to um, amplitude. Yeah. My, my, my historical issues have amplified fivefold, tenfold in the last five years, particularly in the last year with lockdowns. So I've become in certain moments, very reactionary. And so I used to think I could control my emotions. Now I've taken a different approach where it's like, uh, thankfully I have enough sense not to completely blow my gasket. But when I do <laughs> go in that direction, <laughs> which has been happening a lot, um, I can basically, um, you know, um, kind of pull back. If I do something that I don't, that I end up not liking, I can forgive myself right. and, and do that stuff. And, and, um, you know, I've experienced it with my girlfriend, you know, I've experienced right. it with Erica, you know, we've been in situations where, you know, someone did something really stupid and I, I got really pissed off right. and she sort of, you know, startled. And then, you know, and she'll either calm me down and, or I'll talk myself off the ledge and pull back. I, I'm, what I'm saying is it's not okay to, to, to react in a, you know, you know, in a, 
in a catastrophic way, right? You don't want to hurt anybody, obviously, right. but it's okay to let these emotions out and then forgive yourself. Uh, that, that, dude, that's the key. I mean, uh, but hold on. I mean, I, I've been catastrophic. You've been catastrophic. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've, yeah. I've gone to, I've wanted to kill somebody. I mean, I, yeah. everybody knows the story. I got into a hotel in Vegas. We were not drinking. We're not on drugs. We yeah. literally were going up to our hotel room and these two crass low life people got in the room, got in their elevator, obviously both inebriated, whatever, no judgment. And the woman turns to my wife as my wife had just hit the button to go to our room and blow smoke in her face. Yeah. Blows smoke in her face intentionally. Now this is about six years ago, dude, I'll just tell the podcast cause it's a great story. I literally looked at the guy she was with and I said, if you do not have your, you know, effing, and it was a degrading term, apologize to my wife. I'm going to kill you in this elevator. <laughs> I literally said that to him. Yeah. Now this is the truth. They both were whacked and they laughed. And dude, as they were laughing, my right hand was recoiling. And I'm a big dude, as you know, and this guy was going to feel head yeah. crunch, skull yeah. crunch. I mean, I, dude, I was lost at that point. Like, you know, as you know, when the anger boils through you, the root chakra, you get Kundalini release and you are ready to take on the world. It's the reptilian side. And dude, the doorbell rang, you know, ding, like to get yeah. out. And as I was about to destroy him, Monica grabbed the back of my arm and they ran out and they got away, right? So thankfully they did because who knows what would have happened to me. But I say that story because you've been there, I've been there. Men like us have been there many times in our life. And again, the true master is able to ward off that type of thing because we can again look at and analyze our thoughts and say this does not serve me these two are low lives you know i'm thinking this these two are low lives and they don't even deserve me mixing my energy with them i will stand here and i will wait for them to get off even though my ego and my pride wants to kill that person right. and obviously i said that to him and yeah. hunter if my wife doesn't grab my arm, who knows what happens? Yeah, no, I, I, I totally relate. I, um, I broke my, my pinky yep. on my left hand. Right. On somebody's face. It was the last physical altercation I got into. It was self-defense. I knocked a guy out. And um, I, all I remember was that I was sickened by the act of violence, even though I had to do it. Of course. So I kind of had a conversation with myself from that point on, and I just decided that I was going to avoid conflict to the best of my abilities. And I'm not saying that I have entirely. It's beautiful, that's dude. True. But what I've noticed is over the years that I'm a big guy too. I'm almost six I know. You know, 195 pounds. So it's like if I hit somebody, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. And I don't want to, I don't, again, I don't believe in violence. Um, and so now, I think what happens is if you can get into that modality of being, you can, your presence will basically be your, be your best protection. Exactly. Right? Your so, presence. That's it. Yeah. So people might taunt or jeer or do stupid things, but for the most, for the most part, I, you know, I don't really experience any of that stuff because if you look them in the eye and, and you, and, and you're there, it's you, um, you know, it, nothing's going to happen really. And bro. And bro, I'll take it a step further. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm like you, I'm totally nonviolent now too. Totally. I don't yeah. even know what I would do if I had to get violent, but <laughs> the, tr the truth is, is when you are up here and again, this is ancient master sage wisdom. Yeah. You won't attract people like that anywhere close to you. Right. So when I, when that happened to me, I was fucking barely over 200. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was still on my path. Right. And again, maybe I was at 350, maybe I was 275, whatever. I was over the line of integrity. I would save someone's life if they needed it. But like, ultimately I have come to realize, and I know you have too, that the higher you raise your frequency, it, it's again, it's quantum physics. It's impossible for these beings to be in your field. They can't, it's like you have a forge field of energy around your body, what you said is your presence. 
that literally disclaims everywhere you go that I am a being of resonance and dissonance and incoherence cannot even get within a hundred feet of me. And I swear, I tell people this all the time. Like if you are a high vibration being, you're not going to be involved in violence. No one is going to rob you. You are never going to be in a place where your karmic, you know, du you know, duality is in effect. You are always in the highest and best. You're, you're going to have moments. Okay. And I've been having a lot of moments lately, you know, but um, to your point, you, you, your, your field can be fortified in, in a, in a higher resonance overall. And even if you dip into moments of a lack of clarity, reaction, everybody has moments, moods, whatever it is, you can, you can bounce right back. Well, the, right? be the best, you're right. The be let me, let me go back though. Cause you're right. So, so the best way to describe it of that would be moments of when you're out in public. Yeah. And yeah. you are again, are a very high vibration being, but you walk into a home Depot yeah. right, yeah. or Costco and the, the three masters are in there. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And they look at you again, and this is very real and this is very useful for people, but they look at you with the one mask below your nose, clearly not worried about COVID, not in fear of it. And they give you that derided, deri you know, that derision, you know, they give you the stink eye, the evil eye, and they're looking at you like, how can you, and it's, and it's, it's not about you. It's about them. It's like, how can you not care about me? Right. I'm older and I've got my three masks on and by you not doing the same thing, you're a scumbag or a low life because you don't care about me. And, and again, I'm giving people a story, but in reality, you can still smile at them and say, I send you love and light yeah. energetically. Yeah. So you're right, dude. It is a choice all the time, all the time, all the time to be, to, to, to again, to be that guy, to, you know, this yeah. person. But it's not easy, bro. Because like I said, you know, when you and I were on the phone yesterday, Monica and I went and got our nails done and they came in and they were looking at us. And both of us were, you know, very happy and having this amazing jovial conversation with the people that were working on us who also had their masks below their nose. And it's very difficult, again, no matter how high your vibration, when you get judged to not judge in return. Yeah, that's right. You know, and that's the, that's the battle for people that's like us right now. Judgment resides only in the domain of the creator. Right. It's not, and we do it anyways, because oh, we're human. Yeah. So I would, another thought surfaced as you were speaking, which is that um, standing down evil is very challenging now because it's so blatant. It's, it's out so there. Obvious, right? And so yeah. for example, yeah. I become enraged about the things that I've, known about or experienced or been witness to on some level. Um, you know, I don't even want to talk about those things, but you sure. know what I'm referring to. Yeah, totally. And the, the key, and, and this, this has been a reminder in, in several discussions lately, is that you have to be dispassionate about evil and compassionate about what's the alternative. And that's a big challenge because how can you be dispassionate about right. people suffering? But as you mentioned in every podcast, at least lately, you know, uh, souls make choices and, yep. and everybody plays a role in this experience yep. uh, of life. And, um, but you really do. I mean, it, it's, it's akin to, you know, Mike's talked about it. You know, you go into a war zone you have to be dispassionate about death and destruction. You have to move right through it and then yeah. just figure out a, a, an alternative. It's yeah. really true. And I've experienced it in different ways um, as, as, as I know you have. And so, it, but it's a really critical thing, but, but as warriors, we have to stand it down. There's no question about it. It's we just not, and you're right. It's not easy. Bro. We have it's to do totally it differently. not easy, man. It's not easy. Uh, it's absolutely no. not easy. And as you said, you know, evil is out there. I mean, literally, let's just be honest. There's demons and human beings right now. And you see it in everyday life. You know, you see it on social media. You see it everywhere. I mean, there's very clearly astral slash demonic beings yeah. inhabiting human psyches right now. However you want to define it, you know, again, good versus evil. And it's like, like you said, you have to be very judicious 
and how you stand it down because you don't want to get caught up into it energetically. Let me let me end the podcast by asking you about your your book that's coming. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I, I want you to mention. I want you to talk a little bit about it, and then of course, you know, just let people know how they can find out about the book, how they can connect with you on social media. Because I know you pretty much are off social media other than LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. So our new nature um, is about natural logic and natural economics uh, and, and ways for businesses to improve the world. And what I mean by natural logic is returning to first principles that deal with natural law right. and quantum physics and thermodynamics and all of these scientific disciplines that have been around for ages that we've sort of either you know, pushed to the side or we've conveniently ignored for you know, fancier, more, you know, more gimmicky uh, forms of what I would call scientism. And yeah. it's really important because if you look at economics as a holistic study of all things that comprise the living world, even though it's not defined that way clinically, um, these things, all of these things matter. And the book also really details the interdisciplinary requirements, starting with the human being and the self, going outward into different, all these various domains and developing holistic practices. So it's, uh, it's essentially, it's an economic framework. It's one framework. It's not the only one, obviously. Um, and it's uh, got a lot of detail about what those components and what those mechanics are. And um, it, it also lays out in detail uh, what the system looks like based on the work that we've been doing. So when I say we've been doing this work, um, it's really exciting. I mean, we've been, uh, I was just on the phone before this call uh, with a friend and colleague. We're building the, the world's first you know, carbon-backed asset. Believe nice. it or not, it doesn't exist. And it's not a credit or an offset. It's literally, it takes carbon assets and transparently ledgers them and monetizes them. And we're, you know, we're going right into voluntary markets that already exist. And it's a totally new viable form of sound money. Um, we have Rare, which is, a, uh, which is gonna be released soon, which you know, redistributes digital goods and services where you, you, can, you, you reshare that good and service and you, take a, you, you share in the profit doesn't exist, at least with the economics that we've laid out. Um, and a bunch of other projects that we're working on involving, you know, sustainable ecosystems, um, you know, indigenous communities. So the book goes through all of that in detail. And it's, it's really just a way for people to see uh, a different way of looking at the world and how they can participate in it. And that, that's basically the thrust of it. Awesome. So it, I'm going to release it when rare goes into market, which should be in a couple of months. Um, I just decided that the only way I was going to get a book published is if I released right. it on platform. So yeah, that's awesome, bro. And honestly, you know, to everybody on the audience, you know, Gunther is one of my closest friends. This book's going to be amazing. I mean, you got to be a pretty smart person to truly understand all the teachings and stuff in there. But I mean, you know, it won't be written in a way that you know, I'm sure of seventh or eighth grade level of uh, awareness could not understand and get through. I mean, it's very needed and very important. Um, you guys can find him on LinkedIn at Gunther, LinkedIn.com, uh, Gunther Sonnenfeld. You can also go to his website, which is Novena, N-O-V-E-N-A dot P-E-C-H. So it's Novena Tech. And uh, again, find him on Medium and read his articles. Uh, all the links to his amazing articles recently are going to be, of course, in this podcast, which, by the way, I'm going to run this probably middle of March as fast as I can get my podcast team to get this thing together and put it up there, bro. But uh, amazing time. Thank you so much for coming on, man. I love you. Yeah. Love you too, man. Thank you. Blessings. Awesome, man. So you guys support the amazing people that come on the JC Campbell podcast. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.